What is going on guys? This is Red Bull Tanker with Operation Unthinkable Turn 3. So like I uh so kind of picking back up from the end of the turn two video where we went over what that there were no timeline events and then um for um our random event how i lost eight units from my armies in germany which was kind of a blow for me and so we'll we'll just uh pick up from right there once again i won the initiative this time i rolled a three and airsoft commando rolled a two so unfortunately for him i won the initiative yet again so kind of walk you through um, my attacks so first off see so we can see that i launched an attack against um the british forces in norway um i went in with six infantry three three no six infantry two fighters and a jet and the british had three infantry and a fighter defending and all of his units were destroyed i lost and then uh all of his units were destroyed and i lost uh three infantry in that fight um next coming down here to oslo i did three separate attacks into oslo one um airsoft commando had two strategic bombers just sitting here so i sent over two jets from west poland to take care of those and then while my jets were taking care of the two strategic bombers i sent two strategic bombers over and I bom and I strategically bombed the naval base and the air base here in Oslo. Um, I max damaged the naval base at 10, and I damaged the air base for seven. Next, um, I did launch an attack. I launched an attack against the Third Army here in Berlin. Um, I will say that I did win. I won on my attack, and the third army uh, ceased to exist, and such and such as that. So, I initially battled for Berlin, and I won. And I still had a decent sized army sitting there um, at the end when it came time for Airsoft Commando's turn. And then let's see here, what else happened on my turn? Oh. So because, um, let's see here. So because in turn two, when the U.S. nuked Warsaw, I was given release authority to release the one nuke that I had achieved on turn one. And I launched an atomic raid against Paris. And um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, there was an air battle because he scrambled units from Reims. He scrambled three uh, aircraft from Reims, and he had two tacticals in the territory to defend it. Um, in the air battle, we each lost one aircraft, and then my nuke was a success. However, I rolled a six, which was um, when you roll. So for a six, it was for naval units, but since there are no naval units, the rules say you go down to the next result which was the air so his two tacticals that were in the area both were destroyed and i was able to max damage the paris factory for 10 and paris's six ipc worth is now down to three which means the factory here can only produce three ipc now so that was my attacks on then um reinforce um non-combats just again trying to get everything trying to get everything pushed to the west here so that way i can um you know try and meet the allied might that is coming at me and that was basically it yeah the um for airsoft commando um he definitely repaid me in kind so as you can see over here in east prussia there is a british unit 
So when I launched my air raid out of um, Warsaw, I didn't get the plus one because of the damaged um, airfield. So I ended up landing here in East Prussia, which I realized was a mistake. And, um, you know, kind of like what I was saying with this allied, with this massive allied seventh fleet, like a lot was gonna happen. So he took a landing force of like two infantry and a couple aircraft and came in here and wiped out two of my strategic bombers and then captured East Prussia. Uh, let's see here. Next, what else did he do? Oh, then he took another combined force off of England and came here into Stettin and launched a small amphibious attack into Stettin, which weakened, uh, which definitely weakened my forces um, here. So that kind of, that wasn't, how do I want to say that? It wasn't entirely surprising that he did that because I kind of figured that once he had pulled his entire Navy together, that he was going to start striking like either here along the Baltic coast or even, um, or even try for, um, up here in the, up here in like the Barents Sea and stuff. And then finally, like I said, he counterattacked me at Berlin. He went in with six heavy tanks and just about every single aircraft that he had in Western Europe. And, um, yeah, it was a bloodbath. I lost my entire ground army and I only whittled his tank force down to one heavy tank remaining. And then he moved reinforcements here into West Germany and he moved a good chunk here into um, Munich. Um, I have begun to surmise that he is systematically attempting to target my air force as evidence to his attack on East Prussia. So I've come to realize now, at least part of my strategy is going to have to be that I'm going to just, with armies and air forces, I'm going to have to really, I can't really put a lot of stuff along the coast since he's got this fleet here and he, he's got right now nine, he's got nine ships for offshore bombardment, which is not good for me. So that's something that I am definitely going to have to contend with um, as the game continues um let's see what else yeah and then um he didn't have to do a lot of reinforcing because he basically threw everything in and then like i said he was kind of consolidating here and so then let's see here i think that was pretty much that was pretty much it like i said non-con like his non-combats he put all of his aircraft back um as you can see he's deploying a massive tank force here in London which is not good um and that's one of the rules with like the transports like transports is just two of any unit which um in my opinion I think is a little too overpowered especially for how basically big the allied navy starts with and obviously the massive IPC um how do you want to say it since the allies start with a lot more IPC than the Soviets like the Allies basically can just throw a bunch of money into tanks and transports and can move them all around. And that was one thing I didn't realize reading, the, reading through the rules is that all naval units have a movement of three and then plus one with the naval base. So literally the Allied fleet, when it's around, uh, basically any of its naval bases can basically reach almost everywhere along the board in just one turn. And I'm, in my opinion, that seems that might be a little too overpowered for the Allied navies. Not a hundred, like, that's just sort of my opinion. I'm going a little bit, it's getting a little great out there. So that's kind of, that's kind of, kind of one of my opinions about the navies in this game is that, I mean, the Allies already start with a pretty decent navy. And I mean, I played my navy wrong in this game, I think, for this game. But I mean, again, that, I mean, with the Allies getting so much IPC, they can easily just build a bunch of tanks and a bunch of transports and they can just about crush anything as well as you know buying a lot of air force too because he's been doing that to this game so let's see here yeah that's about it for now
Um, as always, we, we did it again. So we did go into, we did do the first part of turn four, which I will recap on the turn four video, but at least I'll go over it right now. So um, on turn four, he rolled for the Allied reinforcements from the Pacific. He had to get a two or one. He missed that. NATO got formed, and so Portugal came in, and he can now build out of the Oslo and Greek factories. And then we did random event, and it was kind of nice, because even though he launched that attack into Stettin and killed a good chunk of my army, a lot I got a lot of it back, because um, I, got, I got this one, which... Um, you know, German units are reformed. The USSR places nine infantry, three artillery, and one heavy tank um, back with their military. So that was nice. I basically re I basically recouped my losses from his um, his amphibious assault into Stettin. So that was kind of nice for us. All right, so that is it for turn three, and we will see you guys again for turn four. So until then, guys, take care.